Mr. Giuliani, would you like to have a closing statement? Sure, and I would like um, I would like Jenna Ellis to conclude it. I'll be I'll be very brief. I'll just review the facts. Thank you, sir. We had a long and and and, uh, and very disturbing day. I didn't expect things to be this bad, frankly. It's a much worse situation than I realized before I came here. The fraud is much more blatant, more wide open. The whole situation with the Dominion machine is really a national security problem. If you, if you think about it carefully, it's not just Arizona's problem, it's Michigan's problem and Pennsylvania's problem, but it's also the United States problem that our votes are going overseas whether they're connected to China or Venezuela or not, these machines are wide open. China, Russia know how to take information from us from machines far more sophisticated than these extremely uh, poorly constructed devices. And I remember four years ago, we were really upset about the bogus charge of Russian collusion involving some emails that all turned out to be true. They weren't properly obtained, but the information in them turned out to be true, which people failed to realize. And the charge of Russian collusion turned out to be false. And now when we look back on it, the person who colluded with Russia was Hillary Clinton, and the person who got money from Russia was Joe Biden. Now we're facing not a false charge of collusion, we're facing multiple charges in multiple states of a unheard of in our history invasion of our sacred right to vote. We had a long, long session today, difficult session, and it began and ended pretty much the same way. It began with the Colonel pointing out that the Dominion machines that you were using in Maricopa might as well just been wide open computers that anybody could hack into anybody had access to, and just in case it was hard to do it, there's plenty of testimony that despite the fact that they said there were no connections to the internet, your uh, counting rooms and voting rooms were filled with internet connections. And just in case, you might remember that chart on the wall that I can't understand with all those arrows and things like that. That's the, um, that's the traffic that was going on from your voting machines and your calculating machines to the rest of the world. So there's scientific proof that they were communicating hundreds of thousands of times, if not more, which is totally inconsistent with the idea that a voting machine is, as you said, uh, Mr. Chairman, it should be a self-contained unit. The votes go in that box and they remain in that box. And no one can have access to it except the officials who are gonna count the vote. And then, and then it should remain there so we can audit it. It shouldn't be able to be changed the way it was here. We showed you how they changed it in those two elections in Michigan. They just switched the vote after it was over. Well, if they did it in Michigan, you've got to find out if they did it in Arizona. You, you can't certify this vote and not know just the extent the extent to which Dominion changed the vote. That's their expertise, that's what they do. The reason we can't prove to you the full extent of it is because your state government will not make available the machines. You make the machines available to Phil, bet you can get you, I bet, I bet he can get you an answer in three, four days. Right, Phil? Am I going to be too ambitious? No, no, sir. Three or four days. So I challenge the governor who doesn't want to meet with me, maybe meet with Phil and turn over the machines. And let, let Phil see, are we telling the truth when we say they stole the vote from President Trump? But we don't even have to rely on that. I asked, you might note all your witnesses, our witnesses, your witnesses, I asked them to do the best they could to estimate the number of ballots that went through, mail ballots that went through without any observation by a Republican. Because that's completely illegal. That's the central part of their conspiracy because they did that in every other state. 
They did it in Pennsylvania. They did it in Michigan. They did it in Nevada. They uh, did it in Wisconsin. And they did it in Georgia. It can't be an accident that they did the same thing. And they did it in the big cities where they could manipulate the vote better, not in the whole state. Same plan, same pattern, same thing. So in, in Pennsylvania, it turns out to be about 827,000 votes that were entered into the box without a single Republican around. And, you know, they could have been cast all by Mickey Mouse. We have no idea. Those votes are completely null and void. Under the law of, of Wisconsin, votes like that are, are completely null and void. And I just did a quick count. I counted up 769,903 that these witnesses estimated went through without their being able to observe as the law requires, and I believe due process requires. And I think we'll be able to show that to the, to the Supreme Court. It was 35,000 for Ann Orth. It was Elizabeth Harris, 22,903, and then another 130,000. Then about 120,000 for Janice Bryant. Leslie Minkus, approximately 100,000, the 55 tables. Ju uh, Ju uh, Judith, Judith, I'm forgetting Judith's last name here. 162,000, and Kathleen Alvey, 200,000. And you can go back and check that. My arithmetic may be a little off but it's somewhere between 750 and 800,000 votes. I'm sorry, that's a lot of votes. That, that goes beyond just determining the election between Trump and Biden. That's over. That's 10 million, that's 10,000 votes. This is having stolen an election from the people of Arizona. And they're gonna say, well, if you cancel out the 769 votes, 769,000 votes, you're denying them the right to vote. No, no, you're not. You're reaffirming the right to vote of your other four million people who cast an honest ballot. We don't even know if these people exist. And I'm sure some of them don't even exist. So we're going to we're going to deprive living human beings of their franchise in order to preserve the franchise of people who maybe don't exist, maybe are illegal, maybe are felons or maybe voted 10 times. There's no way to know. They completely flaunted the law and put us in a position where we, we, ha we have to conclude that these ballots are null and void. So I know it's really tough. Sometimes I know what you're facing because we, we face it every day. We face horrible threats, ridiculous things said about us. I have now come to the conclusion that I'm proud, of, I'm proud that I'm called those names by people like that. It makes me very proud of myself and I think my mother and father, who both are dead, but taught me to be a patriotic American, are proud of me also. So I don't really give a damn what they say. <laughs> but I, and I know you're like that too. I know you're all like that too, or you wouldn't be here. But you got a lot of colleagues that are not. And they're not necessarily bad people. They're people who want to make a living there are people who don't want their families harassed. There are people that want the opportunity to just, you know, get by every day and do something good. You gotta convince them that this thing that we have, liberty and freedom and the right to vote and freedom of religion and freedom of speech, it's under attack all the time. From the beginning of our republic until now, it's under attack. Sometimes foreign enemies, sometimes domestic enemies, sometimes combination of both. And it's impossible to tell who gets called upon to make sacrifices. You think of all the young men and women we've lost overseas. They were called upon to make a sacrifice and other young men and women weren't. Well, right now you're being called upon to make the sacrifice. The members of this legislature, the Constitution of the United States put the finger on you. Our founding fathers put the finger on you. You're our salvation. Article two, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution puts the finger of responsibility in preserving our right to vote on the legislature of Arizona. Not your governor, thank goodness. Not your secretary of state, even more thank goodness. But it puts it on you. And for those who are afraid, look, I've dealt with, I've dealt with human beings 
that I had to convince to testify against the Sicilian Mafia. I had to get them to testify against the five families. I had to get, get them to t testify against Joe Bonanno in Tucson, Arizona. Yes, sir, you where did. Where the nuns actually threw, threw me out of the hospital because he built the hospital. And I've sat there with men crying and worse than that because they felt they were going to die doing it. But they found the courage to do it. And after they did it, they felt so much better about themselves. I, I, what I would say to my colleagues is, and I mean this in the generic sense, just be a man or a woman, not a sniveling coward. You'll feel so much better. You'll feel so much better about yourself. There's nothing that elevates you more than an act of courage. And there's nothing that demeans you more than an act of cowardice. See if you can convince them of that. We need it so badly. And I can't say enough about all of you, about your courage, Mark in particular, Sonny, and all of you, Leo, Nancy, I got to see all the rest there. Brett, oh, you're covering your name. What are you, come on, be like John Hancock, be the first one to sign. <laughs> Kelly, David, David, and Sylvia. You're also all very, very good questioners, very intelligent, and very, very um, properly motivated. And I'm counting on you to find me a whole bunch of others in the legislature just like you, or turn them into you. And would you just sum up on the law so they understand, and maybe can preach it to, their, to, their, to the others? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And it's, it's very difficult to follow that, but I will also likewise encourage uh, this legislature that the facts have been explained today. You have witnesses, you have the evidence, you had the claim, but now you have the proof. And with that, the law is on your side. The remedy is on your side and it's in your hands. And so when you have attorneys, you have uh, other fellow members, you have anyone else um, in the fake news media, whoever it is, telling you that you cannot act or that you should sit idly by and simply allow the certification to go through, that is absolutely false. And when our founding fathers, who themselves had an incredible act of moral courage that lasted for years. When they wrote the Declaration of Independence, they all unanimously signed it, pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Yeah. And that has been the pledge of every American who has understood that they provided the mandate in the Constitution to protect and preserve liberty and freedom and the greatest country on the face of the earth that we experience as the United States of America today. And the reason that they provided the mechanism in Article 2, Section 1.2, is to give you, the state legislatures here in Arizona, and we would call on Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, Michigan, and Nevada, and possibly others, to recognize that you are the sole guardian to combat a corrupted election. And there was a purpose and a design for that. Because when the founders understood the separation of powers, when they understood that the human heart is corrupt, and they understood that there would always be attacks upon our liberty and freedom, they wanted to make sure that the will of the people in the selection of our president, our chief magistrate, would be vested in a body that is separate from that corruption and could look honestly at what happened and be fact finders. You have been fact finders here today. And the mayor and I have both practiced criminal law, uh, me a, a little bit less than he has, just a few years behind him. And we have a standard in criminal law called uh, beyond reasonable doubt. And every jury that I've spoken to, um, as both the prosecutor and then a criminal defense attorney, uh, we have the definition of reasonable doubt. And it's a doubt that's not vague, imaginary, or speculative but a doubt that causes a reasonable person to hesitate to act in matters of importance themselves. Why is your governor and your secretary of state not hesitating to act? There is more than reasonable doubt here on the certification of this election. 
there is so much evidence that we've been denied the opportunity to present in court that you've only heard a fraction of it today. And you don't have to have a standard beyond a reasonable doubt in order to reclaim your Article 2, Section 1.2 authority. The Constitution does not provide a standard of law. It simply empowers you to act. And I would encourage and argue and charge you that this was given expressly to you for the sole purpose of making sure that the people that you represent here in the great state of Arizona are not disenfranchised by corruption. The law is on your side and also it's in accord with federal law in the explanation and the packet that we gave to you earlier on the brief explanation of the law. It also is in accord with federal law. Uh, Section 2 of Title 8 provides that when any state has held an election for the purpose of choosing electors and has failed to make a choice on the day prescribed by law, the electors may be, point, be appointed on a subsequent day in such manner as the legislature of such state may direct. You have not had an election that was held in the manner that you prescribed through the General Assembly. Every person that has testified today, whether it's a fact witness or an expert witness, has given you a reasonable and rational find as a matter of fact that your law has been ignored and intentionally disregarded. You can make that finding and you should make that finding and you should according to not only federal law but the U.S. Constitution which is our supreme law of the land and make that finding that you are reclaiming your delegates and that you will then certify them and choose them, appoint them in the manner that you as the state legislature designates. That is your authority and don't let anyone tell you differently because that is our United States Constitution that was specifically provided by our founders. This is not a political question. We don't, of course, we love our president. We are here on his behalf. But we are also here as American citizens. And I can tell you directly from my conversations with the president, and of course the mayor can as well, that he cares not just about this election, but about every future election. We have to preserve and protect election integrity, and it is up to the courage, as the mayor said, of every man and woman in the state legislatures that see this corruption to act. You have the ability and the authority to act. It's just a matter of having courage. This is not a political question. It's a legal one, and it's an American one. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. What we're experiencing right now is a form of tyranny that is insidious. This is our nation. This nation doesn't belong to Belgium, doesn't belong to George Soros. Yeah, that's right, I said the Soros word. Okay. I have the question, I guess, in my mind, will history judge us as acting objectively today? I love the fact that this panel has been so objective that they have, I mean, we're, we're at 724. I told them we, we, we would be done no later than 730, so I guess I better wrap this up. But think about all of the thoughtful, deliberative questions that have been asked by these people. That's strength. That's courage. I hope that out of this, besides calling for a special session, which I am doing right now, yes. I hope, I hope even more than a special session, I hope even more than a special session, we see a, a series of grand juries convened. Yes, sir. There is so much criminal behavior that has gone on in this state and states around the country. I believe that it's time for our Attorney General and the U.S. Attorney to start perp walking some people. I am glad that you are fired up. 
But ladies and gentlemen, this is a skirmish. You ain't seen nothing yet. Because, because when Satan wants to when Satan wants to extinguish a light, he will stop at nothing. So be on your guard, put on the full armor of God, and be prepared to fight. Thank you. I am asking I am asking my colleagues to please consolidate your notes over the next 24 hours. And I'm hopeful that we will have a work product that we can um, at least vet with our leadership in both the House and the Senate. This is what we have heard. This is the resolution that we would like to have heard. Uh, it's going to take some work. I mean, we're talking about a pretty fast cycle time. But I think that uh, we've got the talent here, certainly. Uh, and I think that we can do that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. <laughs> Senator Burling. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know about you folks, but I think he would be a great Secretary of State. Let's give it up for Mark Fitcher. I think I'll have to have a conversation with somebody at home before that happens. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we do need to clear out of here because we are over time. Thank you. Well, that's uh, concluded today's election integrity hearing at the Hyatt Regency in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, the crew and I got in here around 7.30 today. We're just wrapping it up, and it's been a long and eventful day. Uh, I can tell you right now Liz is confirming, uh, trying to talk with Rudy to see if Rudy's going to be at tomorrow's hearing in Michigan, but I can tell you this, there will be an RSBN crew in Michigan to cover the hearings up there. That's something we're not going to miss, uh, and we'll be bringing that to you.